Good afternoon, everyone. And first of all, I want to say thank you to the Chamber for providing an opportunity for us to talk a little bit about Lamar CISD. Uh, this is my 12th year with the school district, and I don't mind bragging at all about Lamar CISD. And so, uh, but again, thank you all for, uh, for your support. Um, the Mar Consolidated ISD, we cover 385 square miles. Uh, uh, Land-wise, we are a large school district. Oftentimes, I have to remind folks that we actually are a mile and a half from I-10 to the north, and we touch Angleton School District down to the south. So uh, we are a large district. We make up 43% of Fort Bend County. And so uh, the, the, that is something that oftentimes uh, uh, we don't even think about, about how large a county we are, but how large Lamar CISD is within that county. Currently, we have over 26,000 students in our district, uh, and our projections for 2014, 2015 is to have over 27,000 students. We're considered a fast growth school district with 36 campuses. Uh, <clears throat> We've added 4,100 students in the past five years. And when you look at the greater Houston area, we're number six in growth percentage-wise. And that is something that uh, uh, we know that uh, we're going to stay in that top 10% of, uh, uh, or top 10 of school districts around that are actually growing and because we're one of those fast growth ones. We, uh, Lamar CISD last year, added 857 students, and only six Houston area districts added more students than Lamar CISD. Lamar has grown 19.1% over the past five years. And I know some of you have been in, in, in the county as well as in our school district area uh, when we just had one high school, and you know how much we've grown. Uh, in fact, uh, we had someone that came back to our community that had been gone for about 15 uh, years or so and could not believe the growth that has occurred in our area. We've actually, when you look at percentage, we actually outgrew uh, Fort Bend and Katy this past year. If you look at our projections, and um, if you look at here we are at 2012-13 uh, at 26,000 students, we're projected to have over 38,000 uh, students when we're out to 2021. And if you don't think that's going to happen, uh, PASA is our demographer that helps us to identify how many kids we're going to be growing. You can go out to our website, you can pull down their report, and you can look through that report. There was one year that they were 31 students off. So I can tell you that when someone says, oh, that, you don't have to worry about those numbers, then I to, just send them to my office, we'll sit them down, and let them go back and track through it. <clears throat> In a 10-year projection, we're projected to need eight elementary schools, two middle schools, uh, a junior high school, and a high school. So 12 schools in the next 10 years. Our demographer also tells us approximately where those schools need to be. And if you look, uh, <clears throat> this is 1093, this is the Fulcher area, and of course we are talking a minute about the high school and junior high school up there, but we need an elementary school there, an elementary school over in the West Hammer Lakes uh, uh, area, and as you can see, uh oh, okay. and as you can, uh, as you can see down here, south of 59, all the areas where they've indicated that we need to have uh, uh, schools coming up. We just finished a rezoning uh, a committee where we're rezoning for one of our new schools. <clears throat> we have nine billion dollars in taxable values in Lamar CISD, a budget of 183 million. We have 4,300 employees. Every day, 11,900 students ride a bus. We travel over 2.4 million miles last year. And when you look at the number of meals served, we serve 4.8 million meals. Hey, we're competing with McDonald's. I don't care what you say. Uh, we have, it, it is a big operation uh, uh, in our food service department. Our ERG, a group that has gone in and using several different variables and have ranked school districts across the state of Texas, 
We're 23 out of the top 200 school districts that they rank on, on districts that uh, uh, are achieving academically, but also are being fiscally responsible in that process. So we're real proud of that, uh, that ranking. If you look at the tax rate, that tax rate of $1.39, as you can see, has been pretty consistent over the few, uh, past few years. We work real hard to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. And if you want to check us out on the tax rate, go back and pull your tax uh, uh, bill for the last 10 years and look at it yourself to see that our rate has not grown. We've done a lot of things to try to make sure that that rate stayed as close as we could <coughs> to uh, what we've been over the last few years. Uh, funding uh, reduction, uh, uh, I'll be glad when the legislature is out of Austin because they always hit us for, on something. We don't know what it's going to be. But if you remember, they cut our district by $28 million, and we were able to uh, reduce our budget by the amount that they wanted us to, be, to reduce it, and we didn't lay off any employees in the process. Our school first rating, uh, we have uh, for 11 straight years, uh, we've received a uh, top rating with uh, school first. In our district, we had in 2003, $142 million bond issue, 2006, $281 million bond issue, and in 2011, $249 million bond issue. So in those three bond issues, we have uh, over $600 million in bond issues. Uh, in 2013, we had 1,242 million dollars in bonds that uh, this community has supported the school district of. And out of that, currently we have spent about $465 million and we've got $207 million left of those bonds. And we have worked real hard to try to make sure that we bring those projects in on time at or under budget that we've been able to do that. And I'm very proud of our staff and the folks that have helped us to accomplish that. Uh, our board is pretty tough on us. Uh, uh, Ms. Mendoza and Ms. Keith today, uh, our board that, that are here, I don't think that we had any other board members that were here, but uh, uh, they hold us accountable for making sure that we manage the taxpayers' dollars. Uh, if you look at what was projected when we went out for those bonds, the difference between what was projected and what we have spent is actually 27 cents savings to uh, the community. And so we're really, really proud of that as well, trying to make sure that we don't uh, uh, tax our community in ways that <clears throat> they will not like us. And we want them to pass, pass some other bonds. Uh, and in this last bond issue, as I had indicated, we have uh, money for new construction, uh, land, uh, uh, acquiring additional land, technology, transportation, doing a lot of work on our existing facilities, <coughs> as well as uh, some miscellaneous costs for having those bonds. This is in the Fulcher area, and this is uh, where we will have the next high school, junior high school, and sixth grade campus. This is just a mock-up when, when we get ready to uh, start work on that school. Uh, and this is, uh, just to help you, this is uh, Bodie Arc that comes in right here, and this is 1093. The transportation center is already on that site. Uh, and this is the transportation center. We've completed it. It is in operation right now, and again, that's in the Fulcher area. Uh, we will be opening up Adolphus. I mentioned earlier the, the committee has just finished uh, 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 working on a rezoning that will go to the board for uh, approval. Uh, Ryan Middle School is located uh, on the uh, George Ranch Complex. And as you can see, we are well along on construction with both of those projects. Uh, this is an overview of uh, Ryan Middle School, and uh, right over here would be uh, Reading Junior High and George Ranch High School. So all of those are on the same complex. We have 265 buses, 466 routes, 2.7 million miles, as I mentioned earlier. And the annual fuel cost last year was $1.2 million. On all of our buses, we have digital cameras so that we're able to not only see the drivers, but the students. That has been so helpful. <laughs> uh, can you imagine uh, uh, when uh, uh, a parent comes home, I uh, mean, comes up to my office, and they're telling me about how their kid was mistreated on that bus, and that their kid didn't do 
anything at all. And then I pull up the camera and say, that kid is the one that started throwing that thing. So it helps out a great deal. We also have a way of tracking our buses to know where they are, how much time they spend on their routes so that we can work on efficiency. If you come to our campuses, you're going to come through a security system. We have, I can sit in my office, pull up any one of the campuses, and I can look down the hallways, I can look outside the facility from my office. And so that helps a lot. I'm always visiting campuses virtually. They don't know it, uh, but I'm there. But anyway, when you walk, when you walk into the uh, schools, all of our schools, you got to check in. We're gonna, you're gonna have to swipe your badges. And while I'm saying that, I invite any of you that want to come by and visit our schools, please do so. Uh, uh, you got to go through security. We got to check you out, and we're not gonna let you disrupt the educational process. But I always offer that up because you'd be surprised at how many people can talk about our schools and they've never been in one. <laughs> so when they do that, you ask them, have you ever visited the school? And put them in check for me, I appreciate it. <laughs> we are an HEB Excellence Award winner and a Texas recognized school district. Only 28% of Texas school districts met AYP. Last year, Lamar CISD was one of those. When you look at that, the number of schools that met it and the number of schools that did not meet AYP, I was very proud of our teachers and our students. 75% of our schools are recognized or exemplary. <clears throat> when we're in the STAR testing now, this is a new test that we are working on. Uh, third grade, this is an example, blue is Lamar, red is the state. We outperformed the state in every category that was tested. We're very proud of that because our teachers are working extremely hard. This is eighth grade, to just put it into perspective. What the guys are passing out to you now, if you go to the TEA website, you can actually click on and look at the end of course exams. This is the end of, a sample questions of the end of course algebra exam. I want you to look at that before you leave today and take the test in your mind. Don't go to the answers, and then you tell me that our kids aren't learning something. If they have to pass that to get out of school, that's big, guys, I'm telling you. And sometimes we talk about our kids aren't learning anything, but we've never seen any of the work that they have to do to even just get out of high school. So take a look at that, and uh, you don't have to tell anybody about how well you did on the test. <laughs> our starting teacher salary is 46 five. Uh, 11 years experience, 24% of our teachers hold advanced degrees. We have an interact program uh, where we train our teachers on how to use technology in the school. And we got a lot of our teachers that are really, if you walk into a classroom, it's going to be very different than when you were in the classroom. Uh, we have smaller school enrollments. We still have art, PE, and music in it at, at every one of our elementary campuses. Uh, we still offer swimming lessons to all of our fourth graders in the district. Every one of them learn how to swim. That's, been, and that's something that the George Foundation offered many, many years ago after some kids drowned in the Brazos and they came back and that was one of the things that they required us to do as a result of uh, building the natatorium. Project Lead the Way on all four of our high school campuses if you're an interest, interest interested in biomedical engineering, aerospace engineering, computer integrated manufacturing, civil engineering and architectural, or digital electronics, you can actually take one of those on our high school campuses. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, we really are very proud of this program because our kids are determining whether or not they really want to go the engineering route because they're in the school. Every one of those campuses also have a 3D printer. I always just share this slide because you, uh, Rice University, in their engineering program, they only have one. We've got one on all four of our high school campuses, so we've got four. We're competing with Rice. <laughs> uh, college and career facilitators, we have one of these on all four of our campuses, and their job is to do one thing. Make sure that every kid, when they graduate from the Mars CISD, they either have grants or a scholarship for college or a technical institution. 
They start with them as a freshman when they enter high school. And they put, that's, their, that's their job. Only job is to facilitate that. Uh, in 2012, uh, that class earned $13 million in scholarships. <clears throat> Velasquez Elementary is our third Blue Ribbon School. We are very proud of that. They were awarded that this year. We have two Gates Millennium Scholars. These kids get everything paid for through their master's degree. They do not pay one dime for anything. That's a huge scholarship and very competitive. And for a district to have two winners, that's really big. And we're proud of those kids. <clears throat> Rachel Becker was the uh, reserve grand champion at the Houston Livestock Show Rodeo Art Competition this year. 11 out of 13 years, we have had the grand or reserve grand champion. That's like Katie in football. <laughs> that, 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 that's big time stuff, guys, I'm telling you. And our teachers are the ones that are responsible for making sure that our kids really get this. And because they can start as early as elementary school, we think that that is one of the things that supports it. Uh, we had the, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Drew is a defending UIL state speech champion. Uh, we, uh, our foster JROTC, we received a presidential uh, award this past year. We actually had uh, the group from Foshan, China. We have an MOU with, uh, with Foshan where we're going to be exchanging students as well as uh, uh, doing some uh, internet types of activities with those folks. Uh, both teachers and students are visiting each other and that was uh, something that we're really excited about. We had our first uh, state champion in wrestling this year. And of course, uh, Terry High School was uh, received our first state championship in basketball. When we started this journey, there wasn't a whole lot of people on our bandwagon except for us, right? You have now a state medal that says first place that nobody can ever take from you the rest of your life. When you believe in yourself, all right, and you know that other people believe in you, you can do anything that you put your mind to.
real quickly is some of the youngsters that have done well in our school district. We try to keep up with them. Many of them are around here that uh, in this room that are former uh, Lamar graduates. You didn't know B.J. Thomas was a Lamar graduate. Some of them. Uh, we, do, we have a lot of support for our LEAF Foundation, foundation that we're excited about. We would encourage you to go to our website at any time and you'll be able to pick up a, a, a lot of information from there. We're on Facebook, YouTube, all of that stuff. I'm not, they are, but, <laughs> but the bottom line, and we also do a random report that's done by video that we've had over 15,000 uh, individuals to go and view it. Uh, come and learn as much as you want about Lamar CISD. I'll talk your head off. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Randall. Quite impressive what you've accomplished and your team has accomplished at Lamar CISD. At this point, I would like to introduce Curtis Rhodes. Rhodes is a 1983 Needville High School graduate. He attended Sam Houston State University, graduated with a degree in education and teaching certification in biology and PE. He received his master's degree in education administration in 92 from Sam Houston State. He has postgraduate work studies from Lamar University in Texas A&M. Curtis' work experience began at Klein ISD from 87 to 92, where he taught science and coached. From 92 to 94, he was assistant principal of Quero High School. From 94 to 96, he was principal of Grossbeck High School. And uh, I lost my page. From 96 to 2000, he was principal of Stephenville High School. He began his first superintendency in Ingram ISD from 2000 to 2002. And from 2002 to 2006, he was a superintendent of schools. Athens ISD. Since 2006, he has been the superintendent of schools in Neatville ISD. He is a ex officio member of the Central Fort Bend Chamber Alliance and uh, has uh, really been a welcome addition to our team. So please give me a, give, join me and give me a hand. Thank you very much. Let's see if I can follow up what Dr. Randall started there. We're going to cross over a little bit, but we're a lot different in that respect. It's funny, I was telling him earlier, as we got started, I said a lot of times I can sit in Needville and look over, multiply what Needville does by 10, and that's uh, Lamar's size. You take the number of students, roughly 26, 27,000, drop it down to our 2,700. Take the number of buses, 280, I think we run 29 bus routes. Uh, it's amazing how some of that works. Maybe we'll get 10 state championships next year. <laughs> Our basketball team's not quite there yet, though. We're coming. Uh, Dean Bell ISD has been great. I want to say thank you to the chamber. Thank you to the school board members that showed up. But first of all, before I want to start, would my uh, Beth Briscoe stand up, assistant superintendent? And then our four principals. We have four campuses there. Would y'all stand up, please? Mr. Janshek from the high school, Ms. Sebesta, Ms. Smart, Ms. Kavanaugh. You just met the district administrators in Needville ISD. We have a business manager back home and have one person that does transportation and maintenance and uh, part-time HR. So, you just met us. I don't know what the school's doing today, but we're all here having a good time. <laughs> we have an outstanding community. How many of y'all graduated with a class of 200 students or less? All right, we got some small school people in here. I like that. Uh, as you heard the brief of me coming in, I've kind of lived my life in a small school arrangement. There were 84 students in Needville High School when I graduated. We have quite a few more now. We're getting up to about 180, 190 students we graduate uh, each year. Outstanding board with conservative values. Our priority is the children. Excellent community support. Very proud of the school community. Sometimes we wonder if Needville would exist if the school district was not there because we're truly a bedroom community. Exemplary and recognized campuses, all four. Usually we stay in the exemplary ranking. Superior financial ratings by the Comptroller ever since they've been rating the conservative values that we have as managing our money. Three beliefs. High expectations for everyone. Teaching and learning for everyone. Respect for everyone. If we can teach those things, we're going to be productive citizens when we get out because we're going to have the academic basis as we walk across that uh, graduation platform. District profile, just in case you didn't know, Needville ISD was formed 
December 17, 1946. It was formed by three little communities. Big Creek, Marlowe, Guy, Brown, Forrester, Deanville, Siler, Medina, Williams School, and Concord. Back before 46, they all came to Lamar to go to school. Isn't that correct? When they passed the 8th grade or whatever, they came over here to high school. So they began the, the district in 46, encompasses approximately 200 square miles. I've got a chart from the county that's going to show you in a minute just the size that Lamar makes up and Neva makes up. Today, we're still 96% residential or undeveloped. We don't have much commercial, very small commercial base over there for us. Our challenge is to maintain the traditions as we grow. We are beginning to see that growth. We, we, did, we, have, we do not reflect what Lamar is growing. We've been slowly growing as we moved along, but it's taken off at a faster rate now. Here's the map. This came off the county website. You'll see Needville. We're 100% in Fort Bend County. Some may not know that. There's two districts that are 100% in Fort Bend County, and it's Lamar Consolidated and us. Kempton no longer exists. They're part of Lamar CISD. So you can see we're approximately 200 square miles. There's Lamar. A little bit of Brazos comes over in Orchard. Katie has a little bit of us. Stafford, size of their district. They have about, I think, 21 homes, Dr. Hemp said, that move over into Harris. So they're almost 100% and Fort Bend goes into Harris County, the other county. Kind of interesting when you look at it. Our campuses, four campuses. Our elementary school is pre-K-4. We're already up to 1,071 kids on that one campus. Our middle school is 5'6", 437, junior high is 7'8", 485, high school is 9'12". You take those two grades just as they roll up, we're, gonna, we're, we're continually moving forward. We're going to get to that 4A level before long. We might be coming to join you guys. See if we can take that state championship away from you. We have about 2,785 kids. We've grown 5% since June of 2012. So, was that eight, nine months? You can't sneak up on us in Needville. We don't have trees. <laughs> We don't have mountains. We're not sure where they're coming from. We don't have apartment complexes. We don't have et cetera, but there's a lot of residences coming in, but they have small acreage plots. There's a few gated subdivisions, nothing massive. When is it coming? That's the trick. We have PASA also, our demographer. They're beginning work right now. They're gonna do it through June, July, and get us a support and see where we're gonna go, predicting that future. Our demographic data were 51.4% white, 42.7% Hispanic, 3.9% African American, 2% other, 37% low income. That has grown drastically in the last four or five years. Uh, when I came in here, so this is my seventh year as superintendent in, in Needville. When I came in here, we are roughly about 19, 20%. So it's grown rapidly through there. Economy could have something to do with it. Why is education important? You would hope that everybody knows enough when they start strapping the street. <laughs> this was not in Meadville, by the way. <laughs> it was in Damon. <laughs> I actually lived in Damon when I moved here, so I can pick on Damonites. Now, why is education important? Because we are the public education system as a catalyst for a healthy community. Uh, city, state, etc. We make it work. Education is truly the key to me. Because you start, if you have an educated community, and this is a perfect example of Fort Bend County and all the communities within it, uh, you're going to have the educated workforce, a consumer base, a support. I mean, it's pure economics. It's a circle. It's a great circle that you just keep regenerating yourself, making yourself better as you go along. I'm a true believer that public education is the key at the center of that. Our expectations in Meadville. You can go along and you can say, okay, we want to be 99% on the Star English test. We want to do this. We want to do that. We came back with a different look at it. We said, okay, this is what we really want a kid to be when he walks out the door or she. Strong work ethic, positive attitude, communication skills, skills, time management. Be problem solvers. Have that ability. Be a team player. Have self-confidence. That is so important. Ability to accept and learn from criticism. Flexibility, adaptability, work well under pressure. And respect for oneself and respect for others. If you can wrap all those up and have those academically prepared kids, you're going to have great citizens as they leave. And that's kind of the goal that we have in the public school system. 
and you're getting it from all your schools in, in Fort Bend County. And I'm proud to say that we're doing, I think we're doing a great job in Eagle Alaska. The young lady that led the, the pledge earlier is, a, you'll see a picture of her later. She's a National Merit Scholarship finalist. Uh, it's probably going to be her valedictorian, right? Uh, almost a perfect score on the SAT. Just a fantastic kid and a role model for what we want to be. Interesting fact here. Go back. Some of you were here in your 50s. Some in the 80s. Think about this. What influenced you or what influences kids? Home. This came out of a study out of Indiana. The home, the school, the church, peers, and TV. You know, they were coming in then. Go to the 80s. My era, basically. Home, peers, TV, school. Watch where these are moving. Go to the 90s. Your TV, peers, and look where home and school is going. All of a sudden, media comes into play. What influences kids? I know we put Barney on TV when my kids were little. You know, watch Barney. They won't be digging into stuff. But the amazing thing is, watch where home goes. It's here, it's here, it drops. It's off the chart. Where does school go? It goes off the chart. Look at peers and TV. And look at the 2000s. These things didn't exist. Where is it going to go? Where did the church, where did the home influences? I know I learned how to act by sitting by my mom in church and when she would lean over and say, I'm going <clears> to <throat> you when we get home. And for the next 45 minutes, I had to worry about how many whippings I was probably going to get when she got home. And she never forgot. <laughs> what does it mean? Students are influenced by the digital content rather than live human beings. We're getting worse at that. I text now instead of calling sometimes. It's not good or bad. Simply different. Students have a shortened attention span, definitely. They're also used to receiving information faster than a human being or a teacher can deliver it. And as a result, in an education system, we're going to have to change in time to keep up with this because it has to reflect the needs of the learners. Closer look at need bill. District value, $539 million. I don't know if that's times 10, Dr. Randall. Our value is a little bit less. Those farms just don't carry that that some of the businesses have. District budget, run about $21 million. But 34% of that is, is a local, uh, local budget. State is 66. Chapter 41 schools, your rich schools are about 100% about locally. We're definitely not one of those. Uh, we're on the 42 side of, of the West. We have about $8 million in fund balance. Very conservative, conservative life and uh, maintaining that money. Where's the dollar go to? Teacher instruction, supplies, 59 cents. Facilities, et cetera, about a dime. Campus administrative, six. District level staff, that be secretaries, administrators, et cetera, four. You go through this, if you add all these pennies up, about 90 cents of it is targeting where the kids are. And that's where we want it to be. A little bit less, out around. But how do you get it away? Facilities, we passed a bond in 2007 with about a 90% pass rate, and we built a new high school. Opened it in 2010-11. It's got a capacity for 1,200 kids. Right now we're in the low 800s. We have room to grow, but it's built with a core for 1,700. So if the growth does come, we're going to be prepared for it. We finished additions at the middle school to create in the elementary number two. So we can take our large elementary school, realign everything, and zone it out. We'll have some of the zone talks that Lamar gets to get into when Neville goes through the big change. And that's having two elementary schools. Now you're going to have to figure out where you're going to live to where you're going to send them. I'm not looking forward to that one. Don't have much hair and it's gray, but it could be gone by then. And definitely looking to, we have a lot of technology throughout our schools and we're going to continue in that role. Academic achievements, not really there. But one thing to be proud of is we run about a 97% plus attendance rate. Very important. If they don't come to school, they can't learn. Also helps you in your funding and everything else you do. About a 96% graduation rate in four years or less. And I hate to say it like that, but that's how they grade it. Four years or less when you get out. We're around about a 99.5% graduation rate. Ultimately, we have less than 1% dropout. If you look at high schools who never do achieve it. So we have a great job of the staff and the community holding those expectations if you need something when you go out the doors. Uh, average SAT scores around about 1,029, states at 976. ACT's at 22, a lot of kids in the 34 
32, 34 range actually as they come in. 36 is perfect on the ACT. Uh, 1600 is a high score on the SAT. Just a quick glimpse. I don't want to go through all the numbers. If you look at that, that was our most recent star test we took. Uh, Needville's in the blue. States in the red were above in every area. This is a brand new test. Really don't have the standard set because it's coming along. And that's uh, grades 3 through 5. If you look at grades 6 through 8, we're still the blue, they're the red. We're widening the gap, which is a good thing. We flip colors on this one. My technology ability. So <laughs> we're now in the red. It's not like we're the below the state, but this is our high school end of course test. We're real proud of these as they came through last year. Because we almost double everywhere what the state does as they get up to that level. So the kids are performing at the level they need to. Just curiosity, if you didn't know how many tests you take and what's the political level on do we test too much, not test too much, here's a typical school, grade three through eight. They take reading math, reading math, right, reading math, science, reading math. Every year you take it. a little bit much. You get to the end of course test, you got 15 end of courses. Six in English because you're doing reading and writing, algebra, algebra, all the way through. This is a true picture of a test that was taken by a student a week ago Tuesday up in the Garland area, Grand Prairie, that he is a junior. Junior doesn't take the STAR test. Juniors are still into the tax world. But we, where students in the public schools are used to take field tests, and it doesn't count, they just have to take it because then they send it back to Pearson and they clean up their test items. So what he took, since it didn't count, he wrote, I have the tax test to study for, not this unneeded craziness. Wrote YOLO on his test with a smiley face. He's a great kid, they say. But I don't think he wanted to take the test. Then he took a picture of it with an, I with an iPad and put it out in social media. Uh, ended up in trouble. <laughs> Definitely. But it kind of goes to the point because, you know, even when we have to give all those tests and we give those field tests, we have to shut down school instruction for that day because it just stops the, mo the motion of the movement. Unintended consequence, just like this church. They probably didn't mean to say, don't let worries kill you, let the church help. <laughs> but, another unintended consequence. Not good or bad, and I was Methodist, so it's okay. I'm picking myself up. How are we college ready in Needville? We have about 18 AP, AP courses offered. We have nine dual credit courses on campus taught on campus, that means our kids are graduating and have roughly the freshman year completed. Uh, my daughter graduated a couple of years ago and she walked out with 27 hours. She was going to go ahead and get her 30 hours, but she was afraid she might not qualify for, for some things she'd already be a sophomore. So we have probably, what Mr. Janoshek, 40% of our kids are in dual credits they go through. So if you can walk out of school, it's almost basically your freshman year is complete. I know at Texas A&M, that's about $20,000 a year savings that you saw. Uh, also, we have certificate courses. 80% uh, of our students go off to college in some form or another. We have about 50% go to two-year institutions. 30% go to four-year institutions. Thank you. I know Betty McCrohan from WCJC is here. Uh, great relationship with Wharton. Helps our kids out as they move forward. A few recent achievements for our staff and students. There's our young lady that did the, the pledge as National Merit a finalist. Our uh, FFA won the ju judging competition in Houston Livestock Show at about 1,400. Entered there. Uh, Jacqueline Reha performed at, at Carnegie Halls in the Allstate Choir. Dr. Bell is our choir director. He was selected as TK's regular ed teacher of the year for the state of Texas. UAL Academic Champions, this is only two of the campuses. The high school here, we have 29 students that will be advancing the regional. Most of all, one, their academic meet, our middle school, our elementary, and junior high also sweep as they go to their UAL academic competitions. Uh, Blue Jay Band, march out there. We've been Division One, I, I think, last 12 of the 14 years. We have a new program that we started. Our high school's in the background, about 130 acres around it. So the FFA, or the Ag Program, has started a beef cattle project. Uh, they fenced it off, they're building it, they're using all the various classes, put it in, bought 18 uh, F1 heifers, they've all capped out. 
They're doing everything with them from the economic side to running the cattle operation side. They've also taken the ponds. Sometimes I look down here and I start shining my pointer at the screen on the computer. Y'all probably wonder what he's doing. So I can see it. Y'all can't see it. We've also taken our ponds and are studying aquaculture. The science classes are going out. They're doing water studies. They're, they stocked it with bass and catfish to take, keep the rural agrarian style alive in Neville. We have our own restaurant that's open every Wednesday and Friday in the high school from our culinary program uh, called the House of Blue. Up the culinary students run it, the teachers in charge, certified, open to the community. People come in and eat and uh, see our high school. Blue Jay Pride, one thing we try to practice as we go through is we send our, our high school teams, uh, volleyball, football, cheerleaders, etc., down every Friday and they walk through the halls of the elementary schools. Getting them fired up is an exciting time to create the spirit and keep it going. In summary, what makes the local public school district successful? The school community. And we definitely thank you. What does it take? It takes trust, understanding, community, and support. One thing we know is we can't do it alone. It takes everybody together to pull off what's expected. I'll answer any questions you have. I know Dr. Randall Bill, I want to say thank you again to the chain for allowing us to come, brag on Neatville, and I want to wish everyone a safe day and God bless you. <laughs>